Good morning. It is good to be here today. Um, I feel like just what, what Stacy shared this morning, um, we are welcoming all of you here today, but we realize that this day is maybe not an easy day for everybody. So if this is a hard day for you, um, I want you to know that I have been thinking about that this week, and I've been praying for you. Maybe it's a hard day because you don't have your mom with you anymore, or maybe you have a relationship that is strained, and it's not what you had envisioned, or, or maybe you've lost a baby, or maybe you desire to be a mom, and it hasn't happened yet, or maybe it's some other reason that makes this day hard for you. I just want to say, I'm really glad that you're here, and I truly have been praying for you um, this week. Um, and then for others of you, you are on the total other end, and maybe this is your very first Mother's Day as a new mom, and you know, I'm excited for your new adventure. Um, just wait. It gets really good most of the time. Um, <laughs> So if you are here and you have more than one child, I just want to give you a standing ovation because you made it here on time. Of course, you are at the 11 o'clock service. But um, Andy and I have three kids, and early on when they were all little, he would have to be at the church really early. And so that meant I was at home getting myself ready and trying to get three little kids out the door. And it was not it wasn't always easy, and, and some of you maybe can relate to, maybe you have a child whose favorite phrase is, I will do it myself. And it's like really good most of the time, but when yourself takes a half an hour to put shoes on, we just don't have that kind of time this morning, you know, and it just gets stressful. And um, hang in there, you would think like when they get a little older, like in junior high, they get really fast at putting their shoes on, but they're really slow at taking a shower. And so you, you would think it would get easier, but in some ways it, w it only just got different is what it got. And I remember one morning, um, you know, knocking on the door, we need to leave in 10 minutes, you need to get out of there. And, and still it was so stressful, you know, sometimes trying to get out the door. One morning I was in the van with two of the kids and the other one I told him, I said, if you're not ready, you are gonna ride your bike to church. And um, I got in the van, we're backing out the driveway and here he comes, running down the driveway, carrying his clothes and his underwear. Um, <laughs> So, if, if it would, you know, the pastor's families have the same struggles that you all have getting the kids out the door. Um, it's okay, we all made it here and we're all good. Um, and I will say, moms, hang in there because this morning I wanted to leave and you know what I did? I just walked out the door. I just walked out the door. It was like so fun and so easy. I mean, you know, so hang in there. It does get easier. It does get, it does get a lot easier to get out the door. And now, actually, even this morning, Andy's like, honey, we need to leave. You know, so now it's like me slowing him down. But, but anyway, we are so glad that you are all here. Whether you are young, old, whether you are a man or a woman, whether you have children or have no children, I'm just really glad that you're here, and I think God has a purpose um, and something that he wants to, to speak to you today about. And if you're online, we have not forgotten you. We are very aware of your presence here as well, and so we're glad that you are joining us. Um, this sermon series, um, Table Talk, the, what I'm going to speak to you about today, the title is called Come Sit With Me, and it's really interesting because the passage of Scripture is is the sinful woman who anoints Jesus' feet, and she comes into this house, and she actually, nobody ever invited her. She just heard Jesus was gonna be there, and she just shows up. But, but if you just hang with me, you'll see why this title is very appropriate for this passage of scripture. Um, and I am really excited, and I know that I say that every time, you know, that I get to share something about God's word, but I believe that his word is so powerful and so life-changing and that it is so full of good news. And today, I think that there is really good news. So you picked a really good day to come if you don't normally come. Um, he has some really good news for you today. But would you just stop with me and pray with me before I go any further? I would like to say a prayer. Father, I just, I thank you so much for your word, and I thank you, Lord, that you do have something that you want to say, and that your word is powerful, and it doesn't return void, and so today, even in its reading, I pray that you will do the work that only you could do. I pray that you would take me out of the equation, and that we would hear straight from you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come and do what only you can do. I pray that you'll show us what you want us to see, and that you will thrill us with your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, so we are going to look at um, Luke chapter 7. So if you want to follow along in your Bible, you can do it. Or if you want to just look up here at the screen, it is also up there. But I'm going to read all the way from 36, verse 36, all the way to 50. I'm just going to read it through, and then we'll talk about it. So when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who had lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is that she is a, sin, a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house and you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown but whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And there's a few things that I wanted to, to point out, just background kind of things as we just take a look at this. I think that this passage of scripture is one of the most beautiful in all of the Bible about grace. I mean, there are so many, but this is one, and I think that it is so beautiful. Um, it starts out, it says, when, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus over for dinner with him, okay, a Pharisee was a religious leader. That means he was probably the one that was going to be at the synagogue every single day. He probably prayed every single day. He probably tithed. He kept every single religious law that there was, and there was a bunch of rules, and he kept them all. So this is who the Pharisee was. And then, the other person in this, in this passage is the woman. You see, the Pharisee had a name. His name was Simon. But the woman in this passage, she doesn't really have a name. She's just known by her reputation. And it says, a woman in that town who lived a sinful life. And, and, and it's pretty safe to assume that she was probably a prostitute. But here we have this woman with only known by her reputation. And then we have this Pharisee named Simon. And we see that Jesus was reclining at the table. Now, at my house, our table is like one of the high tables, and so all the stools, nobody does any reclining at our table. Only our granddaughter, who occasionally will get up on the table and lay down. <laughs> she might recline on the table, but nobody else reclines at this table. But in those days, the table was probably lower to the floor, and Jesus probably sat on a cushion or, or some kind of couch with his feet out back, leaning on the table with his feet to the back, and that's kind of what they did. So this woman who came to anoint Jesus' feet, she wasn't under the table with everyone's feet. Jesus' feet, were they were out away from the table, and so she had access to his feet. So there's where she, where she knelt and where she was at his feet. We see another thing in this passage is that this woman found out that Jesus was going to be there. She was not invited, okay? She wasn't invited. She found out that he was going to be at this house so she came, and she did not come empty-handed. The scripture tells us that she brought an alabaster jar. An alabaster jar would have been a carved jar that was very expensive, and it had perfume in it. So she bought, brought something that was very valuable, and we find that she pours it on Jesus' feet. The other part of this is that the Pharisee, when he saw this happening, he says, he thought, he said to himself, okay, not to everybody in the room, to himself, he said, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him. So first of all, he says, if this man was a prophet, so we know that he doesn't really understand who Jesus was. 
And a prophet was somebody who, could, who knew something about somebody else without having been told or would have known otherwise. But you see, Jesus knew very well who that woman was. And he knew very well what, everything that she had ever done. And you know something else he knew? He knew what that, what that prophet or what that um, Pharisee was thinking. And he said, I have something to tell you because he knew what he was thinking. He knew his thoughts of, do you know who's touching your feet? It's a sinful woman. But Jesus already knew that. And he knew, he knew the attitude of, of the Pharisee. So he said, I have something to tell you. And what he told him was a parable. A parable was a story that Jesus, were stories that Jesus used to teach people lessons. And in the story, there were, there were two men who owed money. One of them owed 500 denarii and the other 50 denarii. A denarii would have been a day's wages. So the one owed him a lot, a lot. 500 denarii would have been the equivalent of like 20 months worth of money. A lot of money he owed. The other one owed 50, and that would have been like two months. So still a lot of money, but he says neither one of them, so one of them owed a whole lot and the other one owed just a little, but he says that neither one of them could pay him back. Neither one had the, had, the, had the resources and the funds to pay him back. So he says that they were both, both debts were forgiven. And then he says, who do you think would love him more? And he says, the one who's had the bigger debt. And he said, you have judged rightly. You see, Jesus was actually using this story to call out the Pharisee. Um, in in this day, it really wasn't about money. What he was talking about was sin. And even in the Bible, there's, there is a word, uh, 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 an Aramaic word that has dual meaning, meaning debt and sin. I think the word is koba. And in, in the Gospels, in, Matt, or in Luke, we, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And in Matthew, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And those two words are both used. So in this, he is talking about a debt, but what he is really telling them about is this is really an example of sin. He's saying, some of, some of us come and we have this great big sin, and some of us come and we only sin little. But what he is saying is that neither one can pay them back. Neither one has the resources. Neither one are capable of paying them back. But this money lender is perfectly capable of forgiving the debt. And, and that money lender is, is Jesus. So in this, in this passage, I think that there are two things that stand out. And I'm not even going to call her the sinful woman because um, she may have come in that way, but that is not how she leaves. So in this, in this story, there are two things that I think stand out or that are noteworthy about this woman. And the first one is this. She knew where to go. She knew where to go. She knew that her only hope was Jesus. You see, she had, she had this reputation, and she had all of this going on, and she knew about her sins, and she had probably heard Jesus speak at the synagogue because he went from town to town, and he would, he would speak at the synagogue, and she probably either heard him himself, herself, or she had heard about him. But either way, she had heard that there was a possibility that he really does forgive sins. And so she had to go see him. She had to go there. She knew where to go. She believed that he could do this. And this was going to be an amazing thing because, remember, her sins were great. They were many. But she believed that he could do it. And, and the most beautiful thing is, is that, is that is exactly what happened. You see, she went to him, and in verse 48, he says, Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. In verse, verse 50, he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. You see, she didn't come, and he, she wasn't saved because of, of her crying and wetting his feet with her tears and her wiping her, his feet with her hair and her pouring out this expensive perfume. That is not what saved her. What saved her was her faith in coming to Jesus. You see, the Bible says that there is only one way, and that is through Jesus, and that when we confess our sins, he promises that he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So at some point, she confessed her sins to him, and she was forgiven. This woman, this sinful woman who had a ton of baggage with her, who probably um, had shame and guilt and everything that goes along with the kind of reputation that she had, she came and she found forgiveness. You know, I, there was a, 
at Easter, I wore this shirt, and some others wore this shirt that said, best day ever, because Easter was like the best day ever, because Jesus rose from the dead. And then right after, right after that, we had a baptism, and there were some that were baptized, and those that were baptized were people who had said yes to Jesus. They were people who had asked Jesus into their heart, and then they wanted to let everybody else know, I've made this decision, and the whole symbol of baptism was that you go down symbolizing death, and you come up symbolizing life. They had gone from death to life, and that's what happened to this woman. She was in this terrible sin, and when she came to Jesus, he forgave her of her sins, and she went from death to life, and that was her best day ever. This sinful woman was now forgiven. He says, you are forgiven, and you are saved. That had to be a moment for her. That had to be a moment for her. Romans 4, 8 said, blessed is the man whose sins are never counted against him. You see, when she came to Jesus and he forgave her sins, she stood before God as though she had never sinned. That is pretty amazing. That is, that is pretty amazing. This woman who had had all these sins and who had such a great debt that she could not pay. And none of us can. <coughs> it's only by God's grace. It reminds me of a funny story that I read, and it's about a man who dies, and he goes to heaven, and Peter meets him at the pearly gates, and he said, you need a thousand points to make it into heaven. You tell me all the good that you did, and then I will give you the amount of points that I think that those are worth. So he said, tell me what you've done. And the man said, well, I've been married for 50 years to the same woman, and I've stayed faithful. And he says, that is really good. You're going to get a point for that. And he's like, one point for that? And he says, well, what else have you done? And he said, well, I go to church every week, and I tithe, and I serve at my church, and I'm very faithful at my church. And Peter says, that is really good. I'll give you two points for that. And he's like, two points for that? And he says, you know what else I do? I, oh, I opened a soup kitchen and I serve all the needy in my community. And Peter says, that is really good. I'll give you another point for that. And pretty soon, this man is like, oh my gosh, he's kind of like, like what is it going to take? And he says, at this rate, the only way I can get into heaven is by the grace of God. And he says, exactly. Now come on in. You see, we can do all the things that we want, we can try to do to get there. And this religious man, he was doing it all. He was at the synagogue every day. He was praying every day. He was tithing. He was keeping all those hundreds of hundreds of laws that they had, he was keeping. But those were not enough to get him into heaven. Because you see, our sin, and we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says. And none of us can, can do enough to make it into heaven not one of us but the good news is that jesus did jesus did he paid that price for us when he was up on the cross and he he said it is finished those there is a greek translation for it is finished and the word is to tell us die i wanted to make sure that i pronounced that correctly but what that means is paid in full that means there is nothing that you can add to what he did, and there is nothing that can take away what he did. And you see, we are like that woman who just needs to come to Jesus because we can try to be as good as we want to be, and that's not good enough. Or be like this man who went to heaven, and it's just a story, but, but we can think that we're like doing enough things, that we're, we're good enough. You know what, I'm not as bad as they are because I do come to church sometimes, or I'm not as bad as they are because, you know, I pray sometimes, or, or I might come every single week. I might even tithe and serve, and all. but there is only one way, and that is by the grace of God. And that's when he says, come on in when we go and receive that. And that's what that woman did. She came to Jesus and she received all the grace she needed to be forgiven and to be saved. And what I really love, I have a red letter, bi red letter Bible, and that mean, just means that like the words that Jesus himself spoke are written in red letters. And the very last sentence of this passage, it says, your faith has saved you 
go in peace. He could have, like, I love this, and sometimes it's the little things in scripture that stand out, these little things that just make, like, make it even so much better. He could have stopped, and he could have stopped at the part that said, your faith has saved you. But he didn't stop there. But that would have been enough because he, she, he already would have a home in heaven. You know, her, her faith had saved her. She was saved. But he added on three more words. He added on, go in peace. You see, peace is not something that this woman would have known much about. She probably did not have any peace because with, with the kind of sin that she was committing, there's a lot of baggage that goes along with that. There's a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. But he wanted her to have the peace. Not only be saved and not only be forgiven, but go in peace. There is a word, um, I need to find the, the uh, meaning here. Um, shalom, the shalom kind of peace. Jesus, Jesus himself is peace, and that's the kind of peace. The shalom peace means wholeness, completeness, complete peace. Like Jesus did not only want to forgive her, he wanted to make her whole, and he wanted her to have complete peace. Like he wanted her to go as if she had never done the first thing wrong and to go with a clean conscience because that's how he saw her. He saw her as clean. She was no longer the sinful woman. In my Bible, it's titled, The Sinful Woman Anoints Jesus' Feet. And I feel like, gosh, like that's, how, that's who she was maybe when she came to him, but that's not who she is anymore. That's not who she is anymore because she is redeemed and she is forgiven and she has made, been made new. And, and Jesus gave her a new name. And I love that. I love that. So, Psalm 33, 5 says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Some of us here, we need, we need that guilt part gone too. I love that. He didn't just forgive our sin. He forgave the guilt of our sin. And some of you know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sometimes we carry that guilt and that shame, but he can forgive even that. You know, that, that sinful woman, she came as a sinful woman, but she left as forgiven and saved and went in peace. That is a whole new life. That was her best day ever. Like, I can't even imagine the weight that had been lifted. I can't even imagine what kind of celebrating, but we get to see what kind of celebrating we get to see, you know what? She came as an unwanted guest. Nobody had invited her there. She just heard Jesus was going to be there, and she thought, I have to be there. But she was not really an unwanted guest. She might have been an unwanted guest to the Pharisee, but to Jesus, she was very much wanted. I know that in Revelation 3.20, it says, I stand, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and answers the door, opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and they with me. And that eating together symbolized fellowship. It symbolized, it symbolized friendship. And that's what he wants. he wants. He wants this relationship with us. He is already standing at the door. You are already invited to the table. And that's why this, this, this um, title is very appropriate. No, the Pharisee did not invite her, but Jesus did. Jesus wanted her there. The whole, he, Jesus said, I did not come in the world to eat with the religious leaders. He did not even come into the world to condemn people. He says, I have not come into the, the world to condemn them, but to save them. You see, she, he was so glad that she was there. She was wanted there. And, and Jesus says the same thing to us, all of us this morning. There are no unwanted guests here today. If you think you're only here because it's Mother's Day and somebody dragged you here, I want to tell you that God had a word for you today. He is crazy about you. He loves you, and he doesn't want you to take that sin home with you. You can leave here a different person than what you came. You don't have to carry around the guilt and the shame or any of it. And your final destination can be heaven. You can be made new and be made clean. And that's what he has for you today. The second thing, um, well, I think it's interesting because he does want us to come sit at the table with him. And sometimes we think when we go to the table, we say grace, but sometimes we need to go to the table to receive it. And he has it to offer us. The second thing that I see about this woman that I think is noteworthy is her response. The woman's response of gratitude was appropriate. 
we think that it might look a little extravagant to us, we see this woman who comes into the house, she's not invited, she comes into the house, she sits at Jesus' feet, and then she, she, she anoints his feet with her tears. She cries, she is weeping, because you know what? She knows what she's been saved from. She wipes his feet with her hair, and she kisses his feet, and she pours not just any perfume, she takes the alabaster jar, and she came on purpose with that jar. It says she had heard that Jesus was gonna be there, and she had to be there, but she didn't come empty-handed. She came with that jar, that very expensive jar, and she poured it out on his feet. And her response was so appropriate. And I know that Jesus honored her. You know, Jesus wasn't saying to the, to, to the woman, now would you look at this Pharisee who's keeping all the religious laws? Would you look at him and this is what you need? He did not say that. You know what he said in verse 44? He turned to the woman, but he said to Simon, he said, Simon, do you see the woman? He didn't say, woman, look at this man and see what, he said to Simon, you look at this woman, and he, he said all the things that she did because what she did was so appropriate. What she did was so amazing and so extravagant. We may see it as, as, as over the top, but Jesus saw it as pure love because he had told in the parable that those who've been forgiven much love much. She was not forgiven because of these things. She was forgiven because of her coming, because she came in faith. But because of that, this was the outpouring of the grace she received that she just could not contain it. She could not contain it. And he said, Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. And then, in the midst of all these people at this place where she was not invited, she, came, she, was a, she was known as a sinful woman in that town, and they all knew her reputation because he said, Does, if Jesus only knew this sinful woman that was kissed, everybody at the room probably knew that she was, had this reputation, but Jesus does something very amazing and very um, affirming to her. He says this out loud, and all of them heard, heard him tell her, therefore I tell you, your many sins are forgiven. He said that out loud, and all of everybody in the room heard it. And he said, who has ever been forgiven loves little. But this woman, she, was, she loved much because she had been forgiven much. And, and she, is, she is an example to us because she understood the depth of her sin. And when we understand the depth of our sin, gratitude is our only response to the grace we receive. It should be our only response to the grace we receive. And personally, I can say that has not always been my response to the grace I received. And, and I, like, I am not like, proud of that, but there was a time whenever I would receive God's grace, but I did not treat it as the special thing that it is. I would sin and think, okay, God's gonna forgive me. But God dealt with me on that and allowed um, some sifting to happen in my life to the place where I went for years and I could not even say the word grace without crying because it was that it meant that much to me. And I have prayed since that time that I will never get over his grace. I want to be like this woman who her gratitude is so over, she is so overwhelmed because she knows what she has been saved from. And, th and that's me. There are times when I'm at home in my own house, in the privacy of my own home, and I might be praying and just be so overwhelmed to tears. Or I might be listening to a song. Even in my car, I will raise my hand in praise to my God and I don't really care what it looks like to people passing me. They probably think I'm just waving to them, just being friendly. Nope, I'm just praising my God who, who, who gave me so much grace that I do not deserve, and I will forever praise him, and I do not care what it looks like to the people around me. And this woman did not care either. She came in, and she sat at his feet, and she wept, and she kissed his feet because she knew, she knew the depth of her sin and the goodness of God's grace. And I think today that some of us, maybe 
in this story, we can relate to different people in this story. So maybe some of us can relate to this woman and you say, you know what? My sin is great. Like, y'all don't even know how much sin I have in my life. The good, there is such good news for you today. <laughs> because it doesn't matter if your sin is like this much or your sin is like this much. None of us here have the power to save ourselves. Only Jesus can do that. And when we come to the table, when we come to him, and we confess our sins to him, he forgives us and he gives us that grace. And it is the most amazing thing. It is the most amazing thing. Or maybe you don't have that reputation. Maybe you're more like the Pharisee and you look good on the outside. Maybe you come to church all the time. Maybe you serve. Maybe you tithe. Maybe you do all the right things, but there's a secret sin that nobody knows about. I want to tell you that somebody knows about it. Jesus knows about it. Just like he knew, he knew that woman's sin. He knew the Pharisee's heart. He knew what he was thinking, and he knows our secret sin too. But the good news is today is that Jesus died for those sins too. We don't have to live in that, and we don't have to, we don't have to carry that burden. He wants us to come to him and receive. He wants all of us. You see, there is no unwanted person at this table and today. You are all here, and you are all wanted, and he, he desires every single one of you at the table. Um, or maybe... You can relate to the woman after she comes to Jesus. And we see, you know what? I have not been thankful enough. My gratitude is right here when my gratitude should be up here. You know, I've kind of just assumed on God's grace, and I took it as, yeah, 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 he just shows us grace. But we have never, like, realized the magnitude of our sin, and our response has not been what it should be. Because there was a time my response was not what, I sh what it should have been either. So maybe that's you this morning. Maybe God's speaking to you about that. Whatever it is, you know, he is, he is right there willing to receive us and wanting us at the table and asking us to come sit at the table with him. Um, today, I, want, I don't want anybody to leave this place without the opportunity to, to open that door. He says, I stand at the door and knock, and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And so today, if that's you today, I want to give you the opportunity to pray this prayer, to ask forgiveness for your sins, and to just receive it. It can be yours. You can leave here a different person than you came. This can be your best day ever. It can be your best day ever. So I just want to say a prayer with you. So if you would, if everyone would just bow their heads and close your eyes, because I am going to ask people to respond. Um, so if everybody's heads bowed, if that is you today, if you are here today and say, yep, that's me, I, I am a sinner, and I want to receive God's grace, would you just raise your hand to him to let him know that that is you today, that you want to receive it today? You know what? You got your hand raised. He hears you. He sees that. And praise the Lord. He sees that. He sees you. He's telling you, inviting you to the table. All you need to do is to, to say this prayer with me. I'm going to say the words, but if you mean it in your heart, this is your prayer today, you can follow along and say this prayer with me. Father, I thank you so much for giving us Jesus. I thank you so much that your word says that if we confess our sins to you, that you will forgive us. And so today, I'm confessing my sin to you. And, and as, as the Lord would bring sin to your mind, would you confess that specific sin? Would you just let him know, I agree with you that this is sin, and I am sorry for it, and I ask forgiveness for it. Take the time to do that. He, he loves you. He's crazy about you. He came for you. God, I thank you that, that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, and you forgive us our sins and you purify us. God, I thank you that just like that woman left forgiven and, and um, made new, that we can leave here today forgiven and made new. And so I praise you for that. I thank you that, that I'm opening the door to you today, and I thank you that you promised to come in so I can leave here today knowing that I'm forgiven and saved, and I can go in peace, and I, I receive that from you today. I have, I have made the decision today, and I receive all the goodness and the grace that you have to give me. God, I thank you so much that your word is true, and I thank you so much for those who have made that decision today. And Lord, we just love you, and we ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you need my t-shirt today because this is your best day ever. The decision that you made to ask forgiveness 
changes the trajectory of your forever and your forever home in heaven. Um, we are just going to close out this day, I think, with one of the most beautiful songs that is so perfect for this passage, and it's called Come Sit With Me. And we're going to give you a chance to respond as well. And um, it, your response might be, you, didn't, you need to make that decision yet to come to him. You have all the time. He is still standing at the door. But I have asked a couple of people to, to stand along the sides, to be available to pray. And th you know what? He invites us to come to the table for many reasons. Maybe you have a health concern. Maybe you, maybe you just want somebody else to hear, hear a prayer or say a prayer for you. So we do have some people that are going to be standing along the sides that are available who believe in the power of prayer and who want to pray with you. Or maybe your response is just going to be worship to this song. And you're going to realize he's calling you to the table and you're realizing what he did. And so I want you to feel free to worship any way that you want to. This woman, she did not care what it looked like to her neighbor. She didn't even, like, she wasn't even invited to the house, and she's throwing herself at the floor here. So whatever way you want to respond, whether it's I'm going to stand and raise my hand in thankfulness to my God for what he's done to me, or maybe you're just going to sit and reflect what God did, and that's okay. But maybe your posture might be you're going to kneel because that is the posture that you want to take before your God this morning because you realize what he's done. Whatever the posture, it's okay. And so whatever, whatever way that you feel led to respond, respond in that way. But um, you're just going to go ahead and sing this amazing song. And as he does, just respond to however God wants you to. He is crazy about you. Just when hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us, and he said, come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed, we take our place beside you brought with you, you can leave it at the door, let mercy draw you near, he said come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed, take your place beside our Savior, sit down.
Yes, come on, let's celebrate that. A weekend. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we can come to this table that you've prepared for us. By your grace and by your goodness, it's, it's only by your faithfulness that we are able to do that, Lord. And so we get to go in peace today, knowing that we're forgiven that we're redeemed, that we are set free. We are the redeemed ones. And we get to tell the world that they can have this life too. All we have to do is say yes to you, God, and you do the rest of the work. We just thank you for that, Lord. We just celebrate you and your goodness today. We pray that we can just go in peace today. And anything that's not at peace, we just pray that you can resolve in our hearts and our minds as the time goes on. We come to the Savior. We come to our Father. And we just are just so thankful that we are the redeemed ones by your grace. We love you, Father. It's all for you. Be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, all the redeemed, say amen. Amen. Go in peace. Have a great week, everybody.